All right, in this science video, we're gonna talk about the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy is a very important concept in science, and you'll revisit it throughout your science career. And what it states is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So what that means is that we can't make energy out of thin air. If we could, we wouldn't need gasoline to power our cars. We wouldn't need energy sources. We could just conjure up energy somehow. But, but energy cannot be created or destroyed. So we have to take the energy we want to use. We have to get it from some other energy source. And energy also can't be destroyed. So when something has energy and it loses energy, that energy doesn't just disappear. It must go to another source. All right, so energy, it cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be converted or transferred from one form to another. So when one object loses energy, it can't just lose that and have it disappear. That lost energy must go to something else. It might be lost in the air. It might be lost to friction as heat. There are a lot of different ways that we could lose kinetic or lose energy. But again, it's not just being destroyed. It, it is transferred somewhere else. All right. So this leads us to the concept of mechanical energy. So mechanical energy is the total of an object's kinetic and potential energy. So based on the law of conservation of energy, mechanical energy will, will stay constant unless it's lost to an external source. So unless there's friction or air resistance or something taking energy away from our object, it's gonna, it's gonna maintain the energy that it has. The total mechanical energy is gonna stay the same. All right, so the formula for mechanical energy, if it's the sum of kinetic and potential energy, is just kinetic energy plus potential energy. So if we think about this in terms of the law of conservation of energy, let's say that we have an object that maybe rolls down a hill, and therefore, because it's decreasing its height, would be losing potential energy. In this case, we would have to know the kinetic energy has to go up because the mechanical energy is going to be conserved. So if one of these goes up, the other has to go down to keep the mechanical energy at a constant value, right? So kinetic energy and potential energy you can think of as inverses because if one goes up, the other is going to go down based on the law of conservation of energy. All right, so let's think about this then. If we have a ball that's at the top of a ramp and it has 200 joules of potential energy, how much kinetic energy will it have when it reaches the bottom of the ramp? All right, so maybe pause the video and think about this real quick and come back for the answer. So if we think about this in terms of the mechanical energy formula, kinetic energy plus potential energy, so if we have 200 joules of potential energy at the top of the ramp before the object starts moving, that means that our total mechanical energy would be zero for kinetic energy because it's not moving, plus 200 for potential energy. So this would give us a mechanical energy of 200 joules. All right, so then let's think, how much kinetic energy will we have at the bottom of the ramp? Well, we know the mechanical energy has to stay constant. So this 200 joules of mechanical energy is staying constant. And we know that has to equal the kinetic energy, which we're trying to see how much kinetic energy might we have, plus the potential energy. So at the bottom of the ramp, what would our potential energy be? Well, at the bottom, we would have no height. So if there's no height above the ground, if there's no elevation, that means that the potential energy would be zero. So we've lost all gravitational potential energy that we had once this ball reaches the ground level, all right? So if we kind of just drop out this zero here, we can see that the kinetic energy would have to be 200 joules. Okay, so if energy is conserved and we have all potential energy at the top and we roll down to the bottom of the ramp and then we would have all kinetic energy, all of this 200 joules of potential energy must have been converted to kinetic energy by the bottom of the ramp. Again, this makes the assumption that nothing is taking away energy. Realistically, some of this energy would be lost to friction or heat or other sources. But in a perfect world, we would end up with 200 joules of kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp. All right, so one last question here. If we have a ball at the top of the ramp with the same 200 joules of potential energy, and it rolls down maybe halfway down the ramp, some, somewhere down the ramp, and it has 50 joules of potential energy left, how much kinetic energy will it have at that point? So again, we have 200 joules of mechanical energy to start because we have 200 joules of potential and no kinetic energy, just the same setup as the last question. So we want to think if it has only 50 joules of potential energy somewhere down the ramp, let's say maybe here, the mechanical energy we know equals the kinetic 
plus the potential. So if we know our mechanical energy has to stay constant at 200 joules, the kinetic energy is what we're looking for, and we have the potential energy, in this case, was 50 joules. So we can find the kinetic energy here just by plugging into the formula. We can subtract 50 from both sides here, and that will cancel out, and this will leave us with 150 for the kinetic energy. So we could check ourselves. We could say, well, we know we needed 200 joules total of mechanical energy. That's not going to change. So if we take our 150 joules of kinetic energy and add it to the 50 joules of potential energy that we were left with, that gives us the same 200 joules of potential energy that we started with. So the total mechanical energy stays constant throughout any process unless the mechanical energy is basically stolen by another source, friction, air resistance, heat, anything like that. All right, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.